We have a Super Bowl ready to roll. Not the Super Bowl everyone expected, but that's the one we get. And that, of course, will be the Rams and the Bengals and blah, 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 blah. We have the new uh, head coach of the New York Giants joining us in a little bit more than an hour today. So we'll talk to Brian Dayball. We'll go all things Giants, all things Super Bowl, because I will say this. The NFL once again delivers great drama, great energy, and great entertainment. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, kid? Happy birthday to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can anyone miss it? If you go on your Twitter account, yeah, me. balloons fly everywhere. I don't, I'm not promoting it. I didn't say anything. I didn't announce it or anything How like does that. it feel to be 60? Does it feel uh, weird? I'm get, trust me, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, now days like today make me feel more like 70, uh, the way my morning went. But listen, all good, all good. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Thank you to those who've uh, sent stuff in. I've enjoyed all of it thus far. And it's not about me today, of course, <laughs> because it's never about me. It's about you listening. It's about you. It's about the fact that you guys all sat there at halftime with a Bengal Chief game saying, I told you so. Yeah. I told you the Kansas City Chiefs even at, were unbeatable. Even after the F up at the end of the first half. Which by, is a monumental, fireable offense. It is. No, and it's one of those things that will live in infamy when you look back at this game. But even when that happened and they don't get any points out of it, I still didn't think it was going to matter. No, because it's still 21 to 3. You're still saying, hey, if they come out of the gates the way they uh, played in the first half. You can't stop and them. And if they're both first, by the yes. way, in the second half, it's going to be 28 to well, 3 well, in a blink. What I didn't see coming was punt, punt, interception, punt, punt, field goal, interception. Like yeah. that, I could never have predicted well, that Patrick Mahomes and the chief offense would go limp. The thing that got me the most is, you know, they're, they drive right down the field, they get inside the 10. Uh, the clock's winding down. It's going to end perfectly for them to score a touchdown with less than a minute to go at home. You know, I'm n- no disrespect to Cincinnati, but at that point you feel like, all right, the Chiefs are going to win this uh, mm-hmm. in you know similar fashion to the way they've won a lot of games, which is fireworks late. And then it was just weird how they couldn't get the ball into the end zone. Uh, the offensive line collapsed on them. Obviously, the play late to Tyreek Hill that Eli Apple stops. It just seemed like someone flipped the switch, and they went from unstoppable, up and down the field, three possessions, three touchdowns. On the heels of last week's game, six straight possessions, six touchdowns, yeah. and then it stopped. It's like a brick wall went up. I thought it was sort of odd when you look back at that drive, that concluding drive of the first half, that I think a lot of people will talk about years from now and how they effed up and didn't end up with any points. And Eli Apple made a great play on Tyreek Hill. But when Kansas City used their final timeout and they were on the Cincinnati 15-yard line, you know how much time was left on the clock? 13 seconds. Ah, That same magical number one week earlier, the great Patrick Mahomes needed 13 seconds for there to be three plays, a field goal, and overtime. Yeah. And this time with 13 seconds, they did nothing. Yeah, well, it helps to have all your time outside your disposal. For it. <laughs> That's for damn sure. They ran the same and amount they, of plays, though. They ran three honest, plays. Let's be honest, though. Two plays before that, he fumbles. You know, uh, they're lucky to fall. Oh, yeah. Which they did, so they get credit for it. Joe they Thune the recovered it. It wasn't even Patrick yeah. Mahomes. But if Thune doesn't fall on it, and the Bengals do the games over there, too. Yeah. So it was just, it was, it like, at what point during the game did you say, other than them not scoring at the end of the first half, mm-hmm. and just in the back of your mind go, oh, oh, that'll be interesting. See if that comes into play later on today, because there's no reason I- to... Actively think when, that? When I thought it would be a game? When did you think, okay, we got ourselves a game? Giant fans, prepare for this. B.J. Hill. When B.J. Hill tips a ball up, picks off his first interception of his NFL career, and B.J. Hill's a former Giant, spent three or four years here, and I guess had a decent year in Cincinnati. Who the heck was paying attention? When B.J. Hill forced that turnover, and at that point it's a one-score game, it's 21-13, and now they've got great field position, that's when I said to myself, okay, we got a football game. But never, Craig, never until the second Mahomes pick, yeah. right after the Eli Apple drop, never did I think the Chiefs would actually lose. Yeah, it I watched that entire game waiting for the inevitable Kansas City victory. And when Eli Apple, who made that huge play in the first half, yeah. drops a walk-off game-winning pick six, 
I was even more emboldened that, well, the Chiefs will win. And little did I know, on the very next play, Mahomes threw another interception. Yeah, it was just strange. It's like it was everything that's great with the Chiefs uh, and Andy Reid and Mahomes and everything that pe- that is, that's dogged Andy Reid in his career. You know, like uh, weird decisions, you know, cocky, arrogant decisions when uh, you just get the points. I know it's easy to say after the fact. Just take the points. More points, more points, more points is always the way to go. Uh, but look. You get it now. You get a uh, Joe Brr, stick them. Uh, you, you don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't rap for you. You get you get a new team in there. That's never a bad thing, I suppose. Uh, you get two new teams in there. Although the Rams are back uh, for the second time now into this leadership. And uh, listen, all I care about because I don't wager is give me the best game, right? Give me yeah. the most entertaining yeah. game. And two weeks in a row, we've gotten We've that. had great football. What? Yeah. I'm usually a very angry, bitter man when it comes to teams breaking through. Like, the Bengals in my lifetime haven't been in a Super Bowl. The late 80s, I don't remember it, right? So it's history to me yeah, but, when Ken Anderson and Boomer is size. Apparently, and Jim Nance and Tony Romo had a tough time remembering it accurately as well. Yeah, Ooh, well. Far on that. Tony had a very tough day. But usually, I'm very bitter when a team breaks through. Cavs win the NBA Finals. Bengals get to the Super Bowl. Chiefs win their first Super Bowl. But I actually felt very, very good because I started thinking to myself how much hope the Cincinnati Bengals give me and you. The Cincinnati Bengals were 4-11 and last year. The Cincinnati Bengals over the last five years were 25-53. and The Cincinnati Bengals were owned and still are owned by arguably one of the most incompetent owners in the National Football League. All those are facts. And yet the Cincinnati Bengals are in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And let that be a reminder. This is not a prediction. I'm not telling you the Jets are getting there next year or the Giants are getting there next year. But what the Cincinnati Bengals provided is hope and a reminder that in this league, things can change very, very quickly. Yeah. No one in their right mind saw the Bengals going from 4-11 and to a Super Bowl. Zach Taylor looked like a fraud. Oh, yeah, young guy once met Sean McVay. That's the only reason he got his job. And yet they're in the Super Bowl. So I did, as I was watching that ceremony, and why Boomer wasn't presenting the trophy, I don't understand. I mean, Boomer, I'm not saying that to kiss his ass. Like, Boomer Sison was the quarterback of a team that was the last Bengal team to get to a Super Bowl. And by the way, he's already in Kansas City. Right. Like, why wouldn't he be up there presenting that trophy? So, whatever. But it gives me... Maybe it's in uh, Nance's contract. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, uh, Fox has Terry Bradshaw do it, right? But he does, so it doesn't have to be a play-by-play guy. Like, Buck doesn't do it. Uh, Kurt Menefee doesn't do it. Well, Maybe it's in Nance's contract. So it, I present all trophies. I'm the trophies all. But it was an either-or because you had Icky there and right. you had Jim Nance. Boomer could have replaced either one of them. Yeah, the guy Icky ate Boomer. <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, we had great games. Of course, to the Rams game, there were three interceptions in these two games that uh, got dropped. That would have absolutely would maybe not changed the outcome because the Jalen Ramsey, they win the game anyway. But three drops, I know for you Bengal fans, it brings back shades of Lewis Phillips back in uh, the Super Bowl against San Francisco 31 years ago. But we got great football. And uh, hopefully when we meet uh, the new head coach of the Giants in about an hour and a half, an hour, ten minutes from now, here on the show, Brian Dable, yo, he saw those games, I'm sure he watched them, and there could be some sort of, hey, I've got a plan to get us from where we're at to where those teams are at. Because as you said, you know, sports today, it's not like, well, it's not like the NBA for sure, in my opinion at least. It's not like NFL has been for a long time where it's very difficult to go from the have-not to the have. Mm. That is not as hard as it used to be. But in this sport, of course, if you don't have a quarterback, you can't do it. So you nailed it. So the question is going to be, and we're going to ask him flat out, from what you've seen on tape, because he's not he's not seen him in person all that much, if at all, does uh, the does Daniel Jones appear to be a guy that can be one of these guys? Well, that's why the Cincinnati Bengals were able to accomplish what we just described, because Joe Burrow's that guy. And you could tell early on in his NFL career, even when he got hurt, Joe Burrow's that kind of guy. Not that they're going to get to the Super Bowl this Joe quickly. Burr. Right. Yeah. Joe Burr. Come Boo. on, you got to do it. That's his nickname because it gets, comes from a rap song. Joe Burr. I don't think I could roll my R's. You can roll them. I'm going to try. Come on. Have your family Spanish. That doesn't mean I am. Didn't they I've teach learned? you? They've tried. Trust me. Burr. 
<laughs> you can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, I'll be the Joe Burrow <laughs> guy. You're that guy. Yeah, or anytime you need the just point to me and I'll fill it in for you. I, I'm not saying this to clown on you. I'm saying yeah. this because of the discussion you just brought up. Yeah. Why did the San Francisco 49ers lose last night? Well, because uh, Tart dropped an interception. Right there at midfield. Right in his gloves. I mean, the pass was thrown to it him. It was a Catch easy, it was a game-changing, yeah. easy interception, but. It wasn't because of Garops. Yeah, but that's the problem. Of no, Jim. no, no, it is. Because even if Tart picks that off, and it basically would have been a punt. You think, goes, bo- do you think they go three and out? Yes. <laughs> because what happened to Jimmy Garoppolo what? on the final three jobs Aaron of this Donald game? Donald became possessed. He did. He did. Give him credit. Aaron Donald became a possessed yeah, but, man. Uh, uh, look, we all know the talent that the Rams have on defense. Jimmy Garoppolo's not that good. And when push came to shove, and it was go time, because you said it, your word's not mine. You got the football at your own 25. Yep. There's plenty of time left. Let's go. You're down a field goal. Go put together a drive and either tie the game or win the game. And what happened, Craig? They, they went backwards, and then they gave the ball to the Rams. Okay. Jimmy Garoppolo is a big part of why the Niners went home. Ryan Tannehill is a big part of why Tennessee went home. Sure. You can have success overcoming your mediocre quarterback. But to win a championship, to be a sustained winner, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need a franchise quarterback. Joe Burrow is a franchise quarterback. Joe Burr. Patrick Mahomes is a franchise quarterback. Uh Josh Allen is a franchise quarterback. Is Daniel Jones? Is Zach Wilson? Well, we're going to find out, that's for sure. Also, happy birthday to Coach Sala, who I understand celebrates a birthday today. We'll get all your calls throughout the afternoon, 877-337-6666. We got all the action from yesterday, including uh, your take on it and uh, how it played out for you throughout the afternoon. We'll get to the Giants coming up after 3 o'clock with the new head coach. But uh, it's a football Monday as we now get ready for the two weeks that Big Mac hates. The two weeks in which we celebrate the career of Tom Brady. Uh. Oh, yeah, that's coming up, too. Or is it?